Okay, so to the, right now I'm going to show you how to do the basics of refurbishing the Dynaco Mark III. Some of the most basic components I have to change right away when I get a new Dynaco are the caps. So if we look at um, the schematic real quick, I mean the wire diagram real quick, uh, the can capacitor right here. Uh, I need to replace that. I need to replace uh, these two 50 microfarads capacitors, uh, the diode and the resistor. The 1K ohm resistor and the diode needs to be replaced. Uh, I also go ahead and replace the 0 0.02 microfarad uh, cap right there, and uh, also the 6.8K ohm resistor. So here are all my components right here um, the diode. The 0 0.02 microfarad cap. Uh, oh, I also the 11.2 uh, one watt, watt uh, resistor right there. That is the 4.7k, 6.8k. Now here are my caps. Um, as I said earlier, that the original one is rated at 525 volts. Uh, DC caps. Um, what I like to do is I like to either take um, 400 volts and put them in series. So two 400 volts uh, combined into 800 volts. Um, the only thing is that the capacitance gets cut in half. So right here, this is 56. So it becomes about uh, 28 uh, microfarads. Um, and the way how I do it is that I just uh, uh, combine the negative to the positive and I just twist it together and then after that I just solder it There you go. And then just cut away the excess. All right. So since I need uh, four caps for that, that's these four, and then these two right here are the other two uh, 50 microfarads. Now, the real thumb is this, is that you always can go up on voltage, and you always can go up on capacitance for the power caps. Now you can't go up capacitance on the audio uh, uh, caps, but for these power filter caps uh, it's no problem going up in capacitance. So before I start I always like to examine the board to make sure everything uh, all the wires are connected correctly. So just like before in the previous video the blue and green that's in the correct location that's in uh, pin 3 and 4 and then the next blue and green with white stripes is at pin 3 and 4. We can see the output of 5 goes to this uh, 1k ohm resistor to 6 goes down to 3 that's correct. Uh, again 5 goes to 6 goes to 1 that's correct. 2 goes to the center top of the cap. The cap uh, is pointing in the right direction. The uh, green wire that goes to the filament is in the correct location and then uh, it gets jumped over to here which is in the correct location and then this wire goes all the way to 8 and 9, which are, are also in the right location. Um, check the 11.2 uh, ohm resistor. Yep, that looks all good. I look at the, in, the uh, input voltage is good. The stepped up voltage location is good. The choke is good. The yellow filament, that's in the right location. So it looks like everything is good um, as far as wiring goes. Uh, so after I checked all of that, um, so now again I'm going to just replace the basic stuff so that the amplifier can start up. So first thing, let's uh, remove the cap uh, right here. So now I'm going to desolder the wires right here. Um, there is uh, no trick to it. All you do is just put heat on here, 
on the, I usually have some solder on the tip of the sol uh, solder iron. Just put heat and remove. That's all there is to it. So I'm just going to start with this real quick. Give you an example. Put some heat on here. And uh, I also have a solder suction that helps pretty good too. It helps remove some of the solder once I see it bubble up. Okay, as you can see it's bubbling up right now. And all I do is just do that and then... Okay, a chunk came out. Another chunk came out. Oh, wow, that was a lot. Come on. So I removed uh, the resistor. I removed a couple, like two of the wires already. Here's another one. One more. There we go. All right. So after we have all the wires removed, let's uh, do some uh, measurements. So I'm measuring the 6.8 K ohm. As you can see, it's almost about 10 K ohms. Uh, these are first signs that they're failing is that when they start increasing in resistance, so we need to replace that. So the next thing is to test the cap. Even though if the cap t tests good, I'm still going to replace it, but just to demonstrate, show uh, how bad the cap gets. So this is the first one, which should be 30 microfarads. As you can see, there's no more microfarads on here. I have the negative attached to the chassis. And then here's the other one, should be about 20 microfarads, so that still has 22. So that's good. And this one is all out. This one's bad too. And then finally, last one. Okay, that one's just 23 microfarads. So in this uh, can capacitor right here, four of these leads already. I mean, two of the caps are already blown out and two are still there. But again, I always just replace all of them. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the two caps right here. The resistor, the 1K ohm resistor right here and the cap right here. Those are the next couple of things I'm going to remove. And once again, just put, just desolder them. Now, as you can see, the caps are gone, the resistor is gone, um, and I bent the uh, uh, the rectifier, one of the pins, upwards, leaving the brown and black wire still attached to the bottom uh, uh, plate right there, the bottom connector right there. So first, let's install the diode. Now, if you didn't know that the diode is it has direction, the little you want it to be pointing downwards, the silver tip to be pointing at the black and red wire. So silver tip pointing down. So I fished it downwards and then I just fishing it back up so I can make a hook. And then I just want to secure it tightly by looping the wire. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fish the 4.7K ohm resistor. Now the resistor, it doesn't matter which direction you go. I'm just going to fish it through here real quick. And basically I just want enough length so I can connect over towards that side. Again, just like before, I'm just going to make a loop, secure it, and if I have extra Here we go. That's securely hooked right there. And then the next thing I want to do is I basically want to uh, uh, connect these two wires together and I just twist them. Like so. All right. The next thing I want to add my cap and again this right here is ground I just want to fish that in uh, I want the positive side so the side with 
a lip right here pointing towards this way. way. Um, fish through that. And then again, I do the same thing. I just tie it and then secure it. Then I make a 90 degrees and I want to tie it around the end of that where the resistor and the uh, diode connects. So I have all of that connected right there. Now, I would then now connect the 0 0.02 uh, ceramic capacitor. Now this one doesn't matter which direction I put it through. So I'm just going to insert it in like so. And make a I'm going to insert the ground wire right here and you might be wondering why am I inserting a ground wire right here uh, it's uh, later on the way how I modify this a little bit with the uh, uh, with these banks of capacitors I'm going to relocate a ground that's all there is to it so insert that there now I'm going to solder everything together right now so just put some solder right here So here we go, this is after I solder it, as you can see that two caps connect right there and then the resistor and diode connect on the other end like so. So that's it for that. So the next cap I'm going to install is um, again the 50 ohm microfarad, but again I'm using 56 ohm microfarad. At and as long as you have anything over 75, rated at 75 volts, you're good. This one is 400 volts, so it's overkill. So for this electrolytic capacitor, this is directional. Where it says a negative, right here, that's the negative side. And then the other side is positive. We want the positive to point to ground. And I know the original one went from here all the way to over here, but that's just ground. I can just attach it to some other location that's ground. So first I'm just going to hook it in here. Oops, hooked in wrong. The positive needs to go to ground. So first the negative goes to the middle of the pot right there. And then the positive, I'm just going to fish it through the side right here to this ground. Again, the, since the chassis is ground, so I'm just going to fish it through here. And just like before, I'm just going to hook it in tight and then solder it. So as you can see, the negative is connected to the center of the pot and then the positive is connected to the ground, the chassis. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the uh, caps that actually go to pin 5 and pin 6 on this board. If you trace it back, these two wires right here, they just go all the way to the back to connect to the capacitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat up. And after I remove the wires, I'm going to clean the board, remove the solder with my suction. Now this res resistor right here serves us no purpose unless if you use a preamp right here. So I'm going to just clip it away, remove it. And now I'm going to install two caps right here. Now, the way to do it is um, the positive goes to these two, goes to five and six. So I have two caps right here. And then the negative just goes to ground. That's why I have this extra wire earlier on that I soldered on. So I'm just going to stack them up like so. I'm going to tie them down. And I'm just going to connect 
the positive two leads to here and then the negative to get her to ground. So here we go. Um, I just stack these two caps together like so and I just bend these wires. Um, one of the positive goes to pin 5, one of the wires goes to pin 6. As you can see, the negative, both are together and they're connected to the ground wire. And then I have the 6.8 A8, 6.8 K ohm resistor. I basically uh, cut it to such distance and then I soldered a wire on top of it and then I just slide a heat shrink over that. And that goes to pin 5 right there. I'll just get as close as I can. And now I'm just going to solder everything together. Okay, so here's a closer look. As you can see, the resistor coming out by 5 along with the uh, one of the pins to the capacitor. 6 right there. And it's heat shrinked. I also tie a piece of wire right there to hold it, hold the resistor against the leg and the negative is just connect all the way to ground. Now the next thing I want to do is uh, take the wire with the resistor and then connect it to this capacitor right here that I have in series and I have the negative tied to ground um, I'll show you up close in a second and then, and then I want to tie this black wire the choke wire and the B plus red wire uh, to this uh, to the other side to the positive side of it. So I'm going to connect everything, and I'll show you in a second. Now here you go. Here is the final product. Like the uh, negative, of the cap is soldered to the ground, and the positive of it is connected to the choke, the red, the B plus, and the wire that goes to the resistor that goes to uh, number five on the board. Now finally, this uh, last one, this black wire, wire right here, I need to connect this capacitor and where the black wire is, I need the plus goes to that side on the capacitor and then the negative needs to go to ground. Normally I put the cap on the side right here and then uh, connect it that way, but uh, the choke wire and everything right here is really rigid. I can't move them around, so I'm going to relocate them somewhere else, but I'm going to basically remove this black wire and maybe just position the caps like so. So here we go, I soldered it on there so as you can see one side of the plus side is on um, the, the B plus and then the ground is connected down there. Alright so here's my heat gun, I'm just going to Put down those caps right there, and then on this on the side. And that's pretty much it. So this is it. Um, I checked the 11.2 uh, ohm resistor right here and it's dead on 11.2 so I'm not going to replace that. Um, Another thing that uh, you might want to consider doing is go through every single um, solder location and re-solder them, add more solder to them because a lot of times they get brittle over time. Uh, one last thing you could add is a current limit inrush. You basically just add it in between the fuse and the inline voltage. Uh, it helps uh, slowly increase the voltage. Um, but that's pretty much all I do for the bottom part. So as you can see here is uh, me powering up the amp. Um, you want to take uh, your voltmeter and you want to adjust this to 1.56 volts bias. And you do that by adjusting the uh, pot in the middle right there. But um, of course uh, right now the next step is to definitely replace all the caps and the resistors in the middle right there. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.